This video is sponsored by Rail and Road Auction House, the Midwest's only dedicated home for transportation memorabilia. Give yourself a chance to own a piece of history by attending one of their upcoming online auctions. Register to bid by downloading the new Rail and Road app on your Apple or Android device or visit rarauctions.com to join in on the fun. Whether you're new to the hobby or are a lifelong Railroadiana collector, Rail and Road has something for everyone. From porcelain to paper and signs to speeders, Rail and Road Auction House is the place to find your railroad treasure. In 2015, Norfolk Southern introduced the Operation Awareness and Response Program to cultivate and strengthen relationships with local first responders and the communities the railroad runs through. OAR provides classroom, web-based, and field training on hazardous materials transportation, as well as information about rail operations. To kick off the program, NS unveiled SD60E 911, which honors emergency first responders. The vibrant locomotive, with insignia recognizing police, fire, and emergency services, entered revenue freight service on Norfolk Southern's 20,000-mile rail system shortly thereafter. That fall, Norfolk Southern also painted EMD GP38-2 number 5642 to match the 911 and assigned the locomotive to pull the company's hazmat safety train, which was completed and publicly unveiled in April of 2016. The hazmat safety train is used on a semi-annual basis across the railroad's 22-state network for training events at major classification yards. The special train features two boxcars converted into classrooms, each capable of holding 30 people. It also has four styles of tank cars to illustrate a variety of valves and fittings that first responders might encounter when working in a derailment site. Additionally, two 89-foot flat cars designed to transport intermodal containers are included in the consists. The first time we saw the hazmat safety train was in 2019, during a surprise encounter at Wilmore, Kentucky, as it was crossing the world-famous 305-foot-tall High Bridge. That day, a Dash 9 was the assigned motive power, with the 5642 out for maintenance. Little did we know, nearly four years would pass before we had another opportunity to document this unique train up close. In the wake of the East Palestine, Ohio derailment and controlled burn on February 3, 2023, Norfolk Southern has begun an aggressive system-wide safety and response campaign to help educate, train, and equip first responders for handling railroad hazmat incidents in local communities. On Mother's Day, May 14, 2023, the train and locomotives arrived in Chattanooga after being towed south by Manifest 171, which originated in Conway, Pennsylvania. The locomotives and cars were destined for Birmingham, Alabama, where they would be used the next day for emergency management training. Since time was of the essence, the hazmat safety train was cut away after 171 arrived at DeButt's classification yard so that it could run as a separate train to Birmingham that afternoon. It would operate as train 098, with the crew going on duty at 1345 Eastern Time. This was an historic move in that it was the first time that both SD60E No. 911 and GP38-2 No. 5642 pulled the train together. The west portal of the 3,537-foot-long Lookout Mountain Tunnel is the first place we recorded the train as it began its journey to Birmingham. The west portal is known as South Tunnel by Norfolk Southern crews, and unlike the east end, which is finished with masonry, it is an open rock cut. Lookout Mountain Tunnel was completed with double track by the Southern Railway in 1908 after three years of construction. It was initially built as part of the 42-mile-long Stevenson Cutoff from Chattanooga to its namesake in Alabama, a project that was ultimately never completed due to the Panic of 1907.
This line is known as the Alabama Great Southern Railroad, or simply the AGS, and is a wholly owned subsidiary of Norfolk Southern. The company was founded in 1877 and through a series of mergers became part of the Southern Railway in 1894. In Wildwood, Georgia, we were joined by a group of local rail fans who were excited to photograph the train with the campus of the Covenant College atop Lookout Mountain as their backdrop. Built in 1928 with the South's largest ballroom and 200 guest rooms, the former Lookout Mountain Hotel was purchased by the Liberal Arts Institution in 1964. Since then, the college has developed the campus significantly with new additions and facilities to enhance the educational experience. It is perhaps one of the best known landmarks in Chattanooga and can be seen for miles in any direction. Rising Fawn, Georgia is home to some of the nicest people you'll ever meet and also happens to be a great place to record trains running south on the AGS in perfect evening light. Valley Head, Alabama is home to only 577 people as of the 2020 census. While small, the community boasts a vibrant downtown area with several shops and restaurants. Our favorite is the Tiger's Inn, which serves quite possibly the best beer cheese jalapeno burger in the world. With a population of 2,000, Collinsville is surrounded by the beautiful Appalachian Mountains of Northeast Alabama. Its downtown area features many restored buildings, such as the Cricket Theater, which opened in 1946. The railroad has always played an important role in the development of the community, so much so that Norfolk Southern donated an old Southern Railway caboose to the city, which is now on display by the main line.
South of Collinsville, we paced alongside the 911 as it led the hazmat safety train down the AGS main. Originally built as SD-60 number 6577 by EMD in July of 1985, the 911 was rebuilt as an SD-60E in April of 2015 by Norfolk Southern's Juniata Locomotive Works in Altoona, Pennsylvania. It features a unique Crescent-style cab manufactured by Curry Rail Services. The design was created to increase crew safety in the event of a head-on collision. The locomotive was originally intended to receive road number 7003 in conformance with the rest of the SD60E series. However, the decision was made by NS management to decorate the rebuilt model with a special paint scheme honoring first responders and was appropriately christened as the 911 after the universal emergency number. Over the past eight years, 911 has been used in both mainline and local service, occasionally appearing at special events. At Keener, the train began to decrease its speed after the crew received instruction to take the siding at Control Point Willis Creek, just north of Reese City. The dispatcher told the crew of 098 to wait in the siding at Reese City until train 178 cleared up the main line at Atala to the south. They were busy working the yard there and needed both tracks to complete the set-off. In Atala, we caught train 178 after setting out 28 cars. Conductor Carson Bean was riding high in the cab of this BNSF motor as the train blasted out of town.
Unfortunately, to our disappointment, the dispatcher informed the crew of train 098 that they would have to wait for yet another northbound, which was over an hour away. Knowing it would basically be nightfall by the time the northbound cleared Reese City, we decided to end our chase of the 098 after an otherwise successful day on the AGS. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of Norfolk Southern's hazmat safety train and look forward to revisiting the AGS for future videos of trains on the old Queen and Crescent route. As always, thanks for watching Delay and Block Productions. Until next time, happy railroading.